Hi, and welcome to Next Level Carpentry. In this little video, I'm going to show how I use super glue to help me plane this wide, thin board down in thickness without getting snipe on the ends. Check it out. In my opinion, the DW735 thickness planer is the best in its class for minimizing the amount of snipe that I get when planing boards. I feel that's because of the wide stance of the four pillars gives stability to the cutter head so it doesn't rock as pieces feed into and out of the machine past the in-feed and out-feed rollers. But even at that, when planing a wide flat piece, it's inevitable that it's going to snipe going into the planer and coming out. I've got to cut a disc out of this piece of wood and I don't want snipe on two edges of the disc. A common way to eliminate snipe on a small piece is to add a couple of scrap wood rails to each side of the blank that take up the snipe as the piece feeds in, allowing for a smooth planing pass across the workpiece and then the outfeed snipe just shows up on the end of that stick. But in this case, the width of the blank matches the maximum feed width of this planer. So I've come up with a different solution. And that different solution employs the same principles, but rather than putting the scrap sticks on the sides, I'm gonna glue them on the ends. And I could certainly use regular wood glue and glue these pieces to the ends like so for the same result. But I'd much rather wait the 10 seconds for the super glue to set up than to wait an hour or so for the clamped glue to set. So I use standard procedure with this process. Take the stick fast applicator and spray in the general area where the sticks are gonna glue on. And then apply the CA glue to the specific place where the glue is needed. And I imagine most viewers know that there's really no set time required between spraying on the applicator and putting the glued piece in place. In my experience, it can go anywhere from a few seconds to many minutes, and the activator still activates the glue. The only important thing in this process is that the bottom of this guide stick is flush with the bottom of the blank. The tops don't matter. Whether they're square doesn't matter. I just want a smooth and consistent feed through the planer. I'll just wipe little Johnny's nose before I put him to bed. Once all the pieces are glued on, I just flip it over, spray a little activator on any glue that's oozed out the bottom so that I can scrape it off for a smooth and consistent feed as it goes through the thickness planer and that glue won't gum up the platen in the planer. Obviously, if I drop this assembly, these things are going to snap right off. That's the same case with the super glue versus wood glue. It's just an end-to-end -end joint. There's no strength in it, but it's enough to hold the pieces in place and guide the feed rollers as they move across the piece. Nobody has to point out how crude the glue up is on this side. These pieces were rough cut on a bandsaw. I didn't do anything to one face. But the other face is all flat and smooth and will be riding on this jointed surface. And now it's simply a matter of running the blank with its guide bars through the planer in successive passes, small passes because it's such a wide board, and continue running those passes until the top surface is completely smooth, all the pencil marks are gone, and then flip it over and take one more whisker off the back side to finish up the blank. If one of the guide bars should break off during the process, gets bumped or whatever, it's a simple matter of just gluing it back on there. And again, if I was using regular wood glue, I'd have to stop for an hour to get it glued back on to continue the process, and that just wouldn't be practical. I can change the feed rate in this planer to slow it down if necessary on the wide board, but the knives are pretty sharp right now, and it's not bogging down too much with the pass, so I'll just leave the setting where it is. Yeah, and that went pretty well. Got the whole planing process done, start to finish, in less time than it would have taken regular wood glue to dry those sticks on to work through this process.
Something that occurred to me as I was passing the piece through the planer is that if I didn't guide this blank carefully through the planer, because it's so wide, either one of these shoulders could have hit the guide rails inside the planer on the sides of the platened. And if that would have stopped, the feed roller would have pulled this strip loose probably. So in the future, I would either add three strips on each side and line these blanks up with the edges to eliminate the possibility of that feeding through the planer and hitting that guide rail. But it was also easy enough to line the sides of the blank up with the infeed table for a safe operation. Not sure if it'll show up in the camera or not, but there's obvious snipe on these sticks coming and going, less so on this side than the other side. But that snipe wouldn't have been acceptable on the edges of this circular blank. Well, that's pretty much the process. I managed to mill this blank nice and smooth and flat with these temporary runners. All I need to do is snap them off and then lay out the disc and cut it on the bandsaw. This blade is too wide for making this cut in one pass, so I'll trim it close and then finish it up. And I'll make a frank reminder that this is not a video about the best way to make a round wooden disc. This is a video about creating a blank for a disc with no snipe on it, using blocks glued on with super glue to produce a blank with no snipe in it. I'd rather not have to make such an obvious statement, but considering some comments, it's just the prudent thing to do. I hope you find creative ways to apply this method in your workflow. So I guess that's it. Yeah, I'll keep my word this time and keep the video short. So I appreciate you stopping by Next Level Carpentry. If you've got a few more minutes to spend, here's a couple other videos you might want to check out that show other methods that I use here in the shop. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching.